I remember when I first heard about this board game, Kingdom Death Monster. And although I didn't back it, at the time it was on Kickstarter, the Kickstarter page was the first thing I checked out when I simply wanted to have a look at this game. And well, the first thing I saw were these amazing miniatures and they were all painted in this stone-like effect way. And yeah, it really intrigued me, so I decided, yeah, I want to get this game and I want to paint my miniatures this way. Now, skipping years ahead into the future, I have this whole miniature army of Kingdom Death Monster and they are all painted in the stone effect. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to tell you, oh the stone effect way is the best way to do the miniatures, because it's clearly not the case. There are some amazing painted miniatures out there. In fact, at the end of this video, I want to show you some great painting jobs that have been done by people who painted some of the miniatures I released in the last years. So I contacted some of them via social media and I'm really really happy that some of them replied to me and allowed me to show their miniatures here. So if you want to see some colorful painting jobs, just skip to the end and if you want this like rough original kickstarter style that I fell in love with the first time I saw it, stay with me for a moment and check out some different styles of paintings at the end of the video. Now, the first thing you will notice is that I have actually painted two miniatures in two different styles. There is an actual guide of how to paint Kingdom Death Monster miniatures in the stone effect by the guy who painted the miniatures for the Kickstarter. So if you go online and you visit the Black Hands blog, and I will surely link that in the descriptions, you will find a guide to the exact way this person did it to paint the miniatures you see on the Kickstarter page. Now if you do this you will have amazing painted miniatures and that's why I followed the exact guide for the first miniature I painted. And if you take them and make some promotional images they will look awesome. But I also wanted to give you a second option to paint the miniatures because there's a huge difference if you just want to take some photographs of a miniature in a well lighted area or if their miniatures are sitting on a board game table in a dim lighted area of your house. Now for this shot of the miniatures I just took away some of the light I normally have set up here and you can see that actually my version, the lighter version, seems to be closer to the thing that the Black Hands block has painted than the original one following his guide. And that's because light plays a significant role and how your miniatures will look like. Now for both models I will follow the same steps for painting and for time's sake I will just show the way I did the original stone effect. But as I told you before, the steps for the models are the exact same. So I will show you which colors I used for which model and I will put up these two marks so you don't get confused what colors to use for which version. The whole process of painting the model will be divided into six steps. First, we will have to prepare the model for painting. This is followed by priming the model in black. We will then highlight the model in two different stages. Afterwards, we will dry brush the model and finally we will shade the model. How you prepare a model for painting depends on what kind of model you have in front of you. In general it's always a very good idea to take a look at the model and clean up some rough edges that are caused by a support structure, maybe from 3D printing or because you had to cut out the model from a sprue, like it comes with the original board game. But of course I won't do any of that because first of all I'm lazy and second of all, I've already printed all of these miniatures and painted them and this one I'm just doing for you. But jokes aside, what you should always look out for is dry fitting the model, just put it together as it is and check if everything fits. And of course remember, if you're putting together a resin model like this one, 
that comes from a 3D printer, you can't use plastic cement glue, which is the best one for all hard plastic releases. But you will have to use super glue. The plastic cement just doesn't work with resin. Despite of what I'm doing here, or better said, of what I'm not doing here, you should always choose to go over the model multiple times until you're really satisfied and those rough edges are gone. But at least you can now watch this video and at the end you can see how it looks if you don't go for um, negating these rough edges and you can judge for yourself if this is something that will bother you or if it won't. I will prime my model with a black surface primer by Vallejo and I will use my airbrush. Of course you can always use a spray can instead of an airbrush. And trust me, there are multiple steps in this video where I will use the airbrush. In fact, I will use the airbrush for every single step except for dry brushing and shading. But don't be taken aback by that. You of course can use your brush. And you don't have to go off and buy an airbrush right now. The main reason why I'm using the airbrush is because it's a huge time saver and I'm just too impatient to paint all my models by hand. So if you don't have an airbrush, just imagine where an airbrush would hit the model and just do it with your normal brush. If you then furthermore have some knowledge of advanced painting techniques like wet blending, this would just look fine. So don't be scared and try to work with the things you have rather than buying everything that you might need in the future. Now using a primer solves two problems. The first being that it will seal your miniature and every paint you will use afterwards will stick better to the miniature and make it so your painting job lasts longer. And the second reason is of course to have a black undercoat that will stop the original color of your model showing through. For this next step I will use a 50-50 mix of two colors. The first one being a P3 called Iron Hull Grey and the second one being a Citadel Air Color called Sandry Dust. For the lighter version of the model I will again use a 50-50 mix of the Iron Hull Grey and Manoth White Base by P3. If you are using an airbrush for this step and it starts clogging up it might be because one of the colors or both of them are not airbrush specific colors. So you might consider thinning the paint down with either water or an airbrush thinner. Either way I will now start painting the model. And I won't just paint it from the top but I will paint it from all sides. Because I don't want there to be too much black, I just want to give this a rough base coating. After this your model should look a lot more like stone. And this would actually be a pretty perfect start to use some vibrant colors in it. But of course we won't do that, we will go on and make it look even more like stone. For the original version of the stone effect we will now use the same color mixture of the previous step but we will lighten the tone of the mixture by adding some man of white in three stages. For the lighter version we will do the exact same thing but instead of using the man of white we will use some dead white and cold grey in a 50-50 mixture. 
Now I'm just starting to put in some drops of the Man of White into the mixture that's already inside of my airbrush. And contrary to the previous step, I'm now just spraying the model from above, about a 45 degree angle, so it just gets hit from the top. I will now again use some Man of White and go into the second stage of lightening my color. Because the color inside of my airbrush is starting to get thicker and thicker, I am now using some acrylic thinner just to thin it down a bit and to stop my airbrush from clogging. I am now taking some leftover paper and I'm just checking how much lighter my color got and if I have to put in some more Man of White. Just remember that I'm putting in one brush of Man of White at each of these three steps and at the end of the third step we should have a rough mixture of 50-50 between the original mix and the Man of White. After this step our model should be considerably lighter in tone and we might have lost some of the shadows we had before. But don't worry, we'll get those back later on. First we will have to do some more highlighting. For this next step I will use a color called Palette Witch Flash which is by Gamers Workshop and I will use it to dry brush the model. The best way to do this is to take a paper towel, put the paint on it and use a rather big and soft brush. We will now pick up some color with the brush, but instead of going right to the model and painting it, we will rub off most of the paint on the paper towel until there is just a very small amount of color left. The best way I can explain it is that we are not actually painting the model, but we are just using some color dust that's left on the brush and if we brush the model now, the paint will only stuck to the uttermost edges. This is a great way to highlight the model and it really helps to bring out some of the details. You can now see that this dry brushing gives a very distinct look to the model and we will use it on the whole model to make it more uniform. After the step your model will have some nice highlights and now we will work on getting back some of that shadow. We will mainly use a shade called Agrax Earthshade and we will add a bit of Drakenhof Nightshade, which is a blue shade and we will dilute this whole mixture with 50% water. 
For the lighter version of the model I will again use Agrax Earthshade, but instead of the Dragon Half I will now use Norn Oil. I will mix it about 50-50 and I will dilute it with water as well. Shading a model always feels a bit scary. You are taking this huge amount of dark paint and you throw it all over your model. But don't be scared, although your model will look a lot darker at first, the tone of the shade will lighten when it dries. I will cover my whole model with the shade and after I am done with that I am going back in with a clean brush and will pick up some of the pockets of paint that might have formed. This finally concludes my tutorial for a stone effect painting. I will leave you now with some great painting jobs by Sean Paul Creven, Eri Talen and Daniel Bergmann. I hope I pronounced your name somewhat correctly and again a huge thank you for sending the pictures of your work and for everybody who likes them please check out their social media accounts, I will post them down in the description. Thank you all for being here and see you next time.